Well, I want to thank some Mars. And here's what we're going to do. This is going to be two-parter. Part one, I'm going to describe a Danish town which is doing something quite unbelievable with returning ISIS members. And in part two, we're going to discuss media's role in disseminating this information. Okay, so keep in mind this article is from NPR. They could just as easily be from CNN, ABC, CBS, so on and so forth. Uh, a town called Arhus, it's actually a small city, is welcoming returning ISIS members with... They get them a job, they get them an apartment, they get them this, they get them that. And this is their response to somebody who's gone over the Middle East and fought for ISIS, and then they come back. ISIS or maybe some other jihadi group. And these are Muslims, by the way. That they're uh, catering to like this. These are radicalized Muslims by their own admission. It's been called the Hug the Terrorist Program, which it certainly is. NPR is got a very long article here, and I can read it all. What, but listen to this. One day in 2012, a group of policemen in Danish town were sitting around an office when an unusual call came in. This town called Arhus was a clean, orderly place with very little crime. So, what the callers were saying really held the cops' attentions. Their parents, and just hysterical, were called Four Leaf. Link, one of the officers, the son was missing. They woke up one day and he was gone. He left to join a jihadi group. I just didn't exist back then. And the parents, the police figured out. They had others missing and I figured out they'd gone to Syria. Maybe ISIS did exist back then, they just didn't report it. It's 2012, anyway. They were among the thousands of European citizens who were drawn to the call put out by ISIS, an Islamic terrorist group for Muslims worldwide to build the Islamic State. Lincoln our Arslev are crime prevention officers. They usually deal with locals that are drawn to right-wing extremism or gangs. The landscape of global terrorism was completely new to them. When they decided to take it on, and once they did, they wound up bringing an, unusual, an unusually successful approach to combating radicalization. The rest of Europe came down hard on its citizens and traveled to Syria. France shut down mosques it suspected of harboring radicals. Good. The UK declared citizens gone to help license enemies of the state. Good. Several countries threatened to take away passports, move formerly reserved for convicted felons. But Danish police officers took a different approach. They made it clear to Citizens of Denmark who had traveled to Syria, they were walking to come home, and when they did, they received help going back to school, finding an apartment, meeting with a psychiatrist or mentor, or whatever they needed to fully integrate back in society. Oh, brother. The program became the, be known as the Arcus 
Aro smile. It's been called a hug, a terrorist pro model in the media, but this description never sits well with cops. They see themselves as making an entirely practical decision designed to keep their city safe. Now, Denmark hasn't been hit yet, but it's only a matter of time. And these delusional people, they got to be out of their minds. They have to be out of their minds. I don't know how else you're going to put it. Let me explain something. These uh, little jihadis went over to Syria. Many of them have doubtless cut off heads or raped little girls or uh, killed the country's own soldiers. As far as I'm concerned, they should be put up against the wall and shot. That's the way you usually do deal with this in wartime. It's like I said, ISIS is not, ISIS is a European army, it's run basically, I think, by NATO, and <laughs> so on and so forth, so, this is beyond belief, I, I have no words, now take a look at the veterans policy in Denmark. Among the main tasks of the Danish defense are the prevention of conflict, more on the promotion of peaceful development in the world and with respect for human rights. I looked through this and I couldn't tell how their veterans are treated. But I'm thinking returning veterans probably aren't treated quite as well as returning ISIS soldiers. There's another thing is, uh, with these already radicalized Islamics, is they're going to be setting up their cells. Now, God only knows when they, Denmark's going to be hit. I don't know. They haven't been hit yet, but uh, it's only a matter of time. This is just out and out foolishness. I'd put them up against the wall for up to me. Cigarette and blindfold, pow, 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 pow. That's the way this usually works. Unbelievable. This is end of part one. Thanks for watching. Part two will deal with the media's role in this.